Hello viewers, welcome back. In our today's video, we will discuss about the power factor compensation or power factor correction, which is one of the most commonly used schemes in the industrial power systems. In the first part of the video, we will discuss about the theoretical concepts related to the determination of the power factor. Then we will discuss about the importance of power factor correction for the industrial systems and the benefits that the power factor correction scheme brings to the end users. In the last part of the video, we will discuss the construction of power factor improvement plants in the low voltage switchgear. Hope that you are going to enjoy our discussion. To develop understanding about the power factor, we start our discussion from the basic concept of the power triangle. The power triangle is a right angle triangle through which we develop the relationship between the active power, the reactive power and the apparent power. The x-axis of the power triangle represents the active power, which is measured in watts or kilowatts, and is the real power which is transformed into mechanical power, heat or light at the load end. The y-axis of the power triangle represents the reactive power, which is measured in var or kilowar, and is the part of the electricity that helps in sustaining the magnetic fields required by the alternating current equipment, such as motors and transformers. Reactive power is also called the imaginary power as it is not a real power which is converted into work and is generated when voltage and current are out of phase with each other. The apparent power which is measured in volts ampere or kilovolts ampere is the combination of the active power and the reactive power. In the phasor representation, the power factor is the cosine of the angle by which the current either lags or leads the system voltage and is the ratio between the active power and the apparent power. Value of power factor is the indication of how efficiently electrical power is being consumed in the circuit. In case of a DC circuit, the product of voltage and current gives the power consumed in watts or kilowatts. This formula is also true for purely resistive circuits such as the heaters, filament bulbs, electric irons, etc. Where the voltage and current are in phase and the apparent power S is equal to the active power P. The situation becomes complex due to the presence of reactive components in the circuit as due to this current is started to either lag the voltage or is started to lead it. When the current lags the voltage, the resulting power factor is called the lagging power factor. Similarly, when the current leads the voltage, the resulting power factor is called the leading power factor. In other words, we can say that active power can never be negative. Whereas, if the reactive power is consumed by the electrical circuit, it becomes negative, And this will be the case of lagging power factor. If the reactive power is supplied by the components in the electrical circuit, then the reactive power is positive, And this is the case of leading power factor. To further continue our discussion, we consider the industrial environment with predominantly inductive load such as distribution transformers and the induction motors. Due to the inductive load, the system power factor will be lagging in nature and therefore the reactive power will be supplied towards the system as shown here in the diagram. At this point, the question may come to our mind that if in our system the active power is the useful power which is converted into mechanical work then why we consume our resources on the generation and the transmission of reactive power. To understand the importance of reactive power, we take the example of a packet of chips. All of us must have noticed that when we buy a packet of chips, a portion of it contains chips for which we pay money. However, a portion of the packet is filled with gas which we do not consume and naturally we do not want to pay for it. We like it or not, but we need to pay for this combination of chips and gas. This is because gas keeps the chips fresh inside the packet and the chips cannot be distributed in the market without gas. Now we apply this example of potato chips on our case. Chips which is the main product in our case is the active power which we wanted to pay for. Reactive power in the system is like the gas in the chips packet for which we do not want it to pay. However, it is necessary for the system and without it, the system will not going to work. The chips packet, which is the combination of chips and gas, is like the apparent power, which is the combination of active power and the reactive power. From the example, we must have cleared this point that the reactive power will remain in the system. 
Now, we, before we proceed our discussion further, it is also important that we try to understand the relationship between the power factor and the reactive power. We consider an example of a system with connected load of 50 kW. The measured power factor of the system is 0.7. We apply the values through formula and found that the value of reactive power will be 51 kW. If the connected load remains the same, that is 50 kW, However, we improve the value of the power factor to 0.9. The value of reactive power will be reduced to 24.2 kW. This example shows us the important point which we need to remember that the value of reactive power reduces with the increase in power factor. Or we can say that the lower the power factor, the higher will be the demand of reactive power in the system. Now we will discuss in detail the problems that the system will face due to low power factor and the effects on the end user. The KVA requirement of the system is inversely proportional to the system power factor. This we can understand from the below example. We consider a 500 KVA transformer supplying power to 360 kW connected load. The power factor of the system is measured to be 0.75. At 0.75 power factor, the KVA requirement of the system is 480 KVA. Therefore, transformer is operating at 96% loading. If we wish to increase the system load from 360 kW to 400 kW at the same power factor of 0.75, the KVA requirement of the system will increase to 530 kVA. This is more than 500 kVA, which is the installed capacity of the distribution transformer. To cater the increase in load, we are left with two choices. First option is to replace the existing 500 kVA transformer with the next available size of 630 kVA. The second option is to go for improvement in power factor. For improved power factor, we considered here the most commonly considered value of power factor and that is 0.9. At 0.9 power factor and 400 kW of connected load, the kVA requirement of the system will reduce to 445 kVA which is 89% loading of the existing 500 kVA transformer. From this example, it must have been cleared that with lower power factors, we need to increase the installed equipment sizes to satisfy the kVA requirement of the system, which makes the equipment larger and more expensive. As we have discussed that at lower power factor, the total kVA requirement of the system increases. Therefore, the current flowing in the system also increases. With increase in current, the cable size also needs to be increased to cater the additional amount of current flowing in the system and to keep the I square R losses within the acceptable range. Lower power factor also causes voltage regulation problems. To cater this problem, additional voltage regulator may be required in the system. The industrial consumers use three phase supply operating at different power factors based on the connected load. The utility companies impose penalties on the industrial consumers operating below the prescribed value of the power factor. These penalties are imposed as the utility companies need to produce more KVA to fulfill the reactive power demand of the connected load operating at lower power factors. Further, utility companies also need to increase the size of the installed transformers, switchgears and the cables to cater the load demand. From our discussion, I hope that we must have established by now the importance of power factor improvement, not only to the power system, but to the end users. The most commonly used method in the industry for power factor correction is the installation of power factor correction capacitors. These capacitors supply positive reactive power to the system and partly or completely neutralizes the effect of negative reactive power demand of the load. With the supply of positive reactive power, the power factor of the system gets improved and an additional KVA capacity is spared in the installed system equipment to supply any additional demand of the system due to any reason such as increase in connected load. The power factor collection capacitors show good characteristic properties such as these require less maintenance, have good service life of many years very easy to install in the system and have less losses. 
The next phase of our discussion is to determine where to install the capacitor banks in the system for power factor improvement. There are three different possibilities. First option is the central compensation. In the central compensation, capacitor banks are connected after the secondary terminal of the distribution transformer to provide reactive power to the entire connected load. This type of compensation is more commonly used with the loads having continuous load factor. The second possibility is to connect the capacitor banks on individual feeders, providing power to different connected loads. This kind of compensation is used where we have varying load factor across the power system. The third possibility is to connect the capacitor banks at the load terminal. This technique is used for large industrial motors. The concept is to provide the positive reactive power exactly at the point where it is needed. The value of the capacitor banks required for a power system is measured in kilowatt. Here we show that how the value of the required kilowatt is determined. Assuming that we have 360 kilowatt of connected load and we need to improve the power factor from 0.7 to 0.9. We put all the values in the formula shown here. After calculation, we found that to improve the power factor from 0.7 to 0.9 for the connected load of 360 kilowatt, we need to install the capacitor banks of 200 kilowatt. The complete system of reactive compensation for industrial systems is called the Power Factor Improvement Plant of PFIP. Apart from capacitor banks, the PFIP consists of other power components such as the isolating and protection devices. For this purpose, either the MCCB or fuse isolator is used. It provides overcurrent and short circuit protection to the power circuit. The second important component is the magnetic contactor. This contactor is used to connect the capacitor banks to the power system according to the requirement of reactive energy. Care should be taken to consider the capacitor duty contactors as these are suitable for capacitor control. Then comes the brain of the PFIP which is the power factor controller. The controller senses the requirement of required reactive power in the system and then connect the capacitor banks to the system by energizing the power contactor. The PFIP consists of different stages. Each stage consists of one or more capacitors. This stage is the combination of protection device, magnetic contactor and the capacitor. These stages are housed in an enclosure to form the power factor improvement plant. Each stage is connected to the load bus bar through cable connection. For example, we need to make a 200 kVR PFIP. For this PFIP, we consider 5 stages. First two stages are of 25 kW and the next three stages are of 50 kW. The power factor controller is installed at the door of the PFIP and is commonly available either of 6 stages or 12 stages. Since our requirement is of 5 stages, therefore we will consider the 6 stage controller. The compensation can be done either with manual mode or with automatic mode. In manual mode, operator manually connects the stages to the power system. In the automatic mode, the power factor controller monitors the demand of reactive power in the system and connects the stages by itself to fulfill the demand. So this is the end of our today's video. I hope it will help you to develop the understanding about the topic. If you like the video, please hit the like button. Please give suggestions for improvement in the comments box. Please also let me know if you need information about any other topic. I will try to cover it in my next vlogs. Please subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon so that you will get updates about the latest videos. Thank you.